I'm here at Pleasure House Point Natural Area in Virginia Beach. This is one of my favorite spots in the entire city for wildlife photography. I'm trying out the Z6 II as kind of like a little vlogging setup. I'm using it handheld here with IBIS turned on and the 24 to 70 kit lens. So I hope that footage looks nice and good. The conditions look great today. Have a great sunset that's gonna happen in a couple of minutes here. So I'm going to put on my 100 to 400 and get on to some wildlife photography. Now the first animal that I got some good shots of is this female bufflehead duck. Whoa, just look at that landing into the water. I'm very glad that I was able to shoot this clip at 120 frames per second, which allowed me to slow it down to a quarter of its original speed. Now anytime you see a bufflehead swimming around, they are always diving into the water in order to catch aquatic invertebrates that they feast on. And when they come up, their heads just bobble back and forth a little bit. I think it is quite hilarious and always entertaining to watch. So I actually had time to set up my tripod here. And luckily enough, this bufflehead swam really close to me and allowed me to capture some really great video. I shot this clip at 4K and I think I cropped in a little bit here just to get us a little closer to the action. I'm actually really impressed that the Z6 II kept autofocus on the bufflehead even as she was moving behind these reeds here. Now, after walking a little bit further on in the nature reserve, I found this great blue heron posted up in a tree across a pond. I decided to make my way around the pond in order to get some close-up shots of this amazing bird, but he decided to start flying before I could even get remotely close. Luckily enough, I dialed my shutter speed as far to the right as I possibly could and captured these shots at 1 1600th of a second. But for larger birds like this, it's actually fine to go down to around 1 1000th, 1 1200th of a second. But I just didn't have time to get my settings absolutely perfect. And I'm happy with these shots, even though I do have some extra noise because of my extra high shutter speed. Now this bird landed on a branch a little bit kind of closer to where I was and I got some great video of them preening here. You can tell that this is a breeding male because of that unique array of feathers on its back. Wow, just look at all that detail. I captured this footage in 4K, which allowed me to crop in a little bit, and all the video you're gonna see of this great blue heron will be handheld. I decided to move around and get a little bit better framing of this bird and was able to capture some amazing portraits with some nice green foliage and some leaves in the foreground as well. I'm actually super impressed with the quality of these files. The Nikon Z6 II with the Tamron 100-400 absolutely nailed the focus here. Just look at that detail in the feet and in the feathers and just all over the focal plane. You can even see some feather residue on the beak of this bird. I love capturing those extra little details that you don't even notice when you're out shooting them in the field. And before I knew it, this heron decided to take off, but gave me enough of a warning this time that I was able to adjust my settings properly and captured only two somewhat decent shots. This heron decided to take a little stroll around the tree that it was resting on. You can see it poke its head up right here because it hears two kingfishers off dueling it out and hopefully I will be able to come back to this location and photograph them.
I love the shot here of just the reflection of the bird in the water below. I love the dreamy effect that the water had on this shot. And now a vertical portrait, including both the bird and its reflection. Um, having the histogram in my electronic viewfinder was super handy here, so I was able to expose this image exactly how I wanted it. Well, that was a truly incredible wildlife photography experience. That great blue heron let me get very close to him. I was being very silent. I actually turned on the silent photography mode using the Z6 II, so my shutter wasn't even making any noise, and I crept up to him, and he flew away, but I was able to find where he flew away too, and I got some great 4K video, got some great stills of that really timid bird, actually. Most of the times when I try to photograph them, they don't let me get close to them at all, but I got lucky this time, and at least the initial position that he was perched in was just in that perfect golden hour light. That let me extract the most detail with the most beautiful, perfect lighting, but the sun is setting already. Um, quite a beautiful sunset. I actually saw some female hooded mergansers in the pond that the blue heron was near as well, but unfortunately they didn't let me get very close to them. And I also saw two kingfishers like battling it out which was really cool to see, but I didn't get any shots of them either. But that's just some more motivation for me to come back to this amazing spot and capture some more amazing creatures. So I brought my tripod along with me, but I actually didn't end up using it. I used it at the very beginning when I first got here because a buffle head was in a perfect position for me to set up my tripod and capture some good video, nice and stabilized. But when I was shooting the Great Blue Heron, I thought of setting my tripod up, but instead I just decided to go handheld, first starting out in 1080, 120 in case I needed to slow the footage down. But then I just did 4K 30, waiting on that 4K 60 Nikon, come on, give me that firmware update. And I do think that this camera's in-body image stabilization, combining with the lens's OS, does allow for this to be quite a easy hand-holdable setup. And not gonna lie, my arms were getting quite tired towards the end of that photography session there, but uh, that's just some more encouragement to keep hitting the gym, I guess. But yeah, I think the 100 to 400 works quite well with the FTZ adapter, and originally I was planning on buying the Nikon 200 to 500 as a nice upgrade for my 100 to 400. Sorry, it's pretty muddy right here. But instead, I think I'm just gonna wait for the Nikon Z 200 to 600 to come out. It's on the roadmap for 2021. And I think I'd rather just save up and continue to invest in some S mount or Z mount S glass instead of continuing to invest in F mount glass. Although I have been quite happy with the focus performance of my Tamron lenses with the FTZ adapter. It could be better, it could be a little snappier. And I think that's what the S mount line will end up giving me. Also, not gonna lie, I think I'm currently lost. Uh, the normal pathway that you walk at this nature reserve is currently flooded, so I have to rely on this weird kind of shortcut area, but it's like so far, actually, nope, I think I found it right here. It's like so far deep in the woods that the trails aren't even properly marked out, so you kind of have to do some off-roading here. But uh, as I started vlogging, I think I, found my way back, so maybe that's the trick to always know your directions. <laughs> so this has actually been really fun, actually like vlogging and recording what's going on. Uh, it's not something I'm used to with my D750 that I can just hold my camera up in front of me and it will just track my eye. That's pretty incredible, pretty amazing. But yeah, shout out to Pleasure House Point for being like the best wildlife photography location that I've ever been to. I consistently get keepers every single time I come here and it's just really great that such nature reserves exist and I hope they continue to exist in the future. Thanks Brock for all the good work that you're doing. But yeah, hope I get better at vlogging in the future cause I didn't even have my mic plugged in for half of this. 
and it's kind of weird just walking around holding a giant camera in front of you while people are, you know, walking next to you. Uh, it's a little bit awkward, but you know what? We got to do what we got to do to get the content that pleases the people. But yeah, that's kind of it for this video. I'm super happy with the photos and video footage that I got of those bufflehead and that great blue heron today. If you have any more video suggestions, any tips for how I can make these videos better, please let me know in the comments below. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and peace.